Psalm 126, <clears throat> a song of degree. Now Wesley says, or believe, that this psalm was written by Ezra. And talk about captivity, it could have been. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, that's Jerusalem, we were like them that dreamed. They couldn't believe it. And it would match Ezra. It would describe. Or maybe somebody, a counterpart of Ezra and Nehemiah. But wait till the God turns the captivity of Israel under the Antichrist at the second advent. When Jesus Christ brings them in the land. And not Ezra, not Nehemiah. And the dream is, can't believe it's happened. It's finally here. It's like when, the, when the, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord or the rapture. I can't believe it. There's Jesus. It's real. It's true. I think it's either Ezra and Nehemiah or maybe both books. It says at one point, the people were just shouting. And at another point, the, the, the people remembered the old city were crying. They remember the beauty and the new people. I just here we are. It's wonderful, great, fighting. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And it's not a joking kind of laugh. Just you know, just amazement, surprise, wonder, happiness, joy, weeping. You know, I can't believe it. God is true. That's the first time laughter shows up in the Bible, right there. And our tongue with singing. And that singing will bring forth in the millennium. Then said they among the heathen. Testimony unsaved people. Here's what they're going to say. The Lord has, the Lord has done great things for them. Well, when you read Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, Tobiah is not saying how great God is. But I want to look at the realm of Tobiah and the Arabians. I look at the realm of the king of Sarias that sent them. When it, because uh, Nehemiah went back. Amen. When Nehemiah goes back to the king, reports back to the king, everything that's happened. Wow. Your God is a great God. I'm glad I was in part of that work. And there'll be the millennium too. Those nations, the goat, the, the goat nations are cast off into hell. The sheep nations that help Israel. Imagine what they're going to say. Man, God is great. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I was just helping them to help them. I didn't know anything about blessing that blessed. Wow, this is great. Is this what the world's like without a curse? No violence? No. Whoa. That millennium in the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be just a big. Ah, can't believe it. The Lord hath, past tense, done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. And God, as far as the millennium, as far as the second advent. God has written that it hasn't happened, but he's written past that that it's already happened. And yet remember, the Bible says God sees the end from the beginning. That's how great of a God we have. God's prophecy is, I've already seen it. And sometimes, and this is Ezra and Nehemiah, yeah, what, how great God has. I mean, here we are in the land, that there's the temple, there's the walls of the city. And yet, the prophecy spoken, God's already seen it. God already knows how great it's going to be. We don't know anything like that. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Now, you got to wonder, if this is Ezra's time, this is, is this the remnant of Nehemiah's time? These are the people that had not gone with Ezra. Maybe they're going with Nehemiah or those that even held out after Nehemiah. 
You know, we got to think about when, when Nehemiah gets there. When we open up the book of Nehemiah, he's serving the king, and he gets word, you know, the place is destroyed. It's just horrible. It's burnt up. And and you got to look at, okay, Ezra's gone. And a little half disbelief, Lord, we still need that captivity return. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. So Israel, as they search out God, and God gives them deliverance. And we also use five and six for soul winning. But the nation of Israel, it's tears. Daniel, three times a day, is praying towards Jerusalem in tears. Probably Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, and any other Jews that wanted to do right. And probably tears when, when Ezra says, I'm going back. And Nehemiah says, we're going back. He that goeth forth and weepeth, or weepeth. Beareth precious seed. In Mark chapter 4, was the, this would be the sower, the word of God. Shall doubtless, without doubt, come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves. That's Joseph's dream, Genesis 37 7, with him. We apply five and six to soul winning, but the context is not soul winning, it's the nation of Israel going back. Bringing the sheaves when they go in the millennium. And when they go back during Ezra and Nehemiah, during that time, they're picking the crops of Israeli figs, grapes, their native land wine, olives. They're getting the glory of Nehemiah and Ezra. And when the Lord Jesus Christ removes the curse in the millennium, we're getting the crops of our own fields again. And in Babylon, it's going to be a long time. And there are Jews that are not in the promised land today. And there'll be Jews forced out of the promised land during the great tribulation period. And they'll be like, when they get in that land, oh, I know we use it so way, but when we get in the land, the Bible says the curse is removed off the field. And in the Bible, one of the minor prophets says, you know, one's going to be sowing the seed and the other one's going to be picking the crops right behind them. And the Jew is going to be in their land, going to be... Lord, I bring you, that'd be Lord Jesus, I bring you all the grapes from my vineyard. Oh, God, thank you. We're back in the land. That's what the sheaves is here. And the seed, they're planting the seed. That, oh, Lord, God, here is the olives from all of my olive trees. Here is the wheat and the barley. Imagine the, the, the Bible speaks about Boaz and the barley and the wheat. Imagine what grapes. Barley and wheat will be in the millennium as the Jews are planted in the land and they got their own crops. That's what four, five, and six, the content. And then the application, Mark, Mark chapter four, someone going out and sowing seed and God bringing in the fruit and the fruit to us. But the content. Is Israel's in their land and they got their fruit. They got their figs. They got their grapes. They got their wheat. They got the honey. Remember, uh, Jonathan, he's out in the field. They're marching. There's a honeycomb dripping with honey. He just takes his rod and gets a little bit of that honey. David's out. David's on the run from his, from his son, uh, Absalom, and somebody brings him a it's funny, they bring him a bottle of wine. They bring him grapes, raisins, clusters, of, uh, and one bottle of wine. I was wondering that. But you know what that one bottle of wine was? It's, it's Israeli wine. Not Italian wine. It's not wine from California and Napa Valley. It's our wine, David. Probably the freshest new wine they could get. I mean, all the world, you get, you know, made in America, uh, 
there are certain crops that come from Italy. There's certain crops that come from, you know, uh, bananas come from somewhere in Georgia peaches and there's fruit native to the country to come from, but there's coming a time, verse five and six, Jewish fruit. And the tithes of the land, the law is back, and they're going to bring their tithes of the land. Imagine them bringing their to Jesus and bringing to the temple. Imagine all the grapes are coming. Imagine all the wine is coming. Imagine all the olives that are coming. Imagine all the wheat, all the barley. All the cattle, all the sheep, all the lambs, all the goats. Everything is as fruitful in the land of... It'd be like that time with Moses. And I forget that other king in the Bible that had the revival. What's those heaps? The people bring too much. And there had to be a decree. Whoa. That's what the millennium is going to be like. Whoa. In the millennium, when they come three times a year and they bring their tithes according to the law for the Jew. I mean, I know tithing is before the law, but we're talking about the Jew under the law. Because the law is in the millennium. The law is in eternal life for the Jew. When that curse is removed, there's no weeds. And you're talking about five and six, the crops. It's going to be great. 